Hello, in this video we're going to take a quick look and comparison at the Sony Xperia Z against the uh, LG or Google Nexus 4. Now I must mention the Xperia Z is a pre-production model we have here so there might be some differences uh, by the time it comes to production but we don't expect many changes. So first of all let's have a look at the physical size between the two of them. There's not an awful lot of difference in terms of actual uh, thickness or, or width. Uh, it's more on the height of the device. The Z is the taller unit and you can see the curvature on the Nexus 4 uh, is greater than on the Z. You know, side by side there is a difference in thickness. You can sort of feel it as you plane your fingers over the two of them, uh, but it'd be hard pushed to really tell a difference. You're talking uh, fractions of millimeters, really. The Nexus 4 is 9.1 against the 7.9 millimeters of the Z. Both quite classy looking devices, got a premium feel, uh, you've got the glass on the back of the Nexus 4 with this sort of pattern on the Xperia Z, you've got tempered glass on the back as well. Both have got rear facing cameras that record in HD with LED flash and rear microphones. On the Z it's the 13 megapixel camera, where it's just an 8 on the Nexus 4. We've both got uh, front facing cameras as well. It's a 2.2 on the Z and a 1.3 on the Nexus 4. Now 2.2 of course is better than uh, the 1.3 but uh, when it comes to front facing cameras most of the time it's just for sort of video calls. Um, so it's not quite so important but it's a difference nonetheless. So both do video out through the micro USB ports. Uh, they need special adapters to be able to do it or they can do wireless uh, sharing. Both use slightly different technologies. Uh, Sony have got a mirror linking option, whereas uh, LG have got a wireless display option. It depends on your uh, televisions and the compatibility, but essentially they can both do wireless and both can do it wired. Um, unless you've got the specific televisions that are compatible, um, you can do it with the wired options, but you do need to purchase adapters. Both devices use different adapters. In terms of key positionings on here, uh, the power buttons are both on the uh, right side of the device, albeit the uh, Xperia Z is further down. You've got the volume keys on the right side of the Z and on the left on the Nexus 4. And I think it's a little bit because of size, Sony put them down here. It makes sense when you're holding the power button to, be able to do the volume keys as well. Uh, but it's personal preference, it's slightly unusual for Sony to do it down there, the general feeling it or a lot of devices have it um, there on that side. So both look sort of quite classy, both have got very good specifications. So let's uh, get them both sort of powered on and have a look at them. Now the key difference of course is the Nexus 4 is completely unlocked. Um, there's no network or um, manufacturer branding, it's pure Google Android 4.2 on this device. So in terms of getting going with all the latest uh, features, you know the Nexus 4 has got it but that's not to say the Xperia Z is really behind it's currently running Android version 4.1 but it will be upgraded to 4.2 um, but you do also get some other Sony enhancements on the device so there is added value in that in terms of what they can bring uh, to you that the uh, LG or the Google Nexus won't bring so you can see their software versions there. Uh, in terms of memory, this is a 16 gig Nexus 4. This is 16 gig on the Xperia Z. Big difference is this has a micro SD card slot, albeit only takes up to 32 uh, gigabyte cards. The Nexus 4 doesn't have that expansion. Both have 3G um, on board. However, the Sony does have 4G capability as well. Both use micro SIMs. The micro SIM on the Z is located here, whereas on the uh, Nexus 4 it's round here on the side. So, taking a look a little bit more detail at the software, then um, let's go to the home screens. You've got all these sort of home screens you can customize. With the Sony, you've got a little bit more in terms of the way that you actually customize the screen. So you've got your wallpapers that you can choose, but here you've got themes, you've got the easier 
access for widgets. You can choose which home screen you want. You can quickly uh, delete home screens if you choose as well. Now you can add widgets to the Nexus 4, but you have to go into the apps tray and across to widgets and drag and hold them, but it does the same job. It's just a slightly different way of navigating through to do it. In terms of pre-installed applications, now we've installed some apps on the uh, Sony for testing purposes, but um, you get more installed on the Sony one because Sony have added features on here. So Google is cleaner install on, on the Nexus 4 than it is on the Sony. But what Sony tend to uh, install are added features such as uh, Music Unlimited, um, Office Suites, uh, Smart Connect and Sony Car, things that they feel are gonna enhance the overall experience. The, the Nexus 4 is a much purer experience where you know what you want, you wanna customize it, whereas the Z works perhaps a little bit better if uh, you want a little bit of help in getting your device set up for the first time or bringing some more innovative features that you might not thought you wanted, whereas the Nexus you actually have to go off and sort of find um, what you want. Now you can get similar things like Sony Car on the Nexus, but um, yeah, you have to just go and actually find it. In terms of speed, I mean, they're both very snappy. They're both using uh, quad-core uh, processors. Uh, Snapdragon ones, in fact, the the 1.5 gigahertz. So we've got the screen size difference. It's 4.7 on the uh, Nexus 4 against the 5 of the Xperia Z. We've got Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, GPS. It's all on board here. We can have a quick look at the uh, camera differences. So let's just go into them both. So in the camera. Um, the Sony has got more features for sure in terms of the scene modes and options that you've got, uh, whereas the Nexus is a little bit more uh, limited. I mean, you've got different settings, including HDR um, there, but when it comes to video recording, you've got HDR on the video uh, camera on the Sony. It's the first device to have HDR on the video. I mean, you've got other settings um, on here that you can, can control with the Nexus 4, but the options that you've got in terms of the settings uh, just aren't quite um, as comprehensive. You know, you've got flash, you've got this very different menu to actually use. You can flip between the rear and front facing camera. Fairly easy on both of these. You've got, you know, balancing and metering options. You've got the different camera modes here. And that's where the modes come up here. What you have got on this, because it's an Nexus device running 4.2, is you've got this uh, photosphere option, which uh, is a new feature to the latest versions of Android. So it's not gonna necessarily be something everybody wants, but of course the Nexus got it. I'm sure we'll see it come in time to the Sony Xperia Z. So it's very difficult to make a stark comparison between the two of them because they are just such different devices. Um, but hopefully that's given you a little bit of a comparison and explain the differences between the two. Uh, for more videos, check out our channel on youtube.com forward slash technology.